we're working towards a master budget and an ultimate goal of a budgeted financial uh, statement package of the income statement balance sheet and statement of cash flows, we would next move from the sales budget to the production budget. And I've left the sales budget here because some of this information is now going to feed into the production budget. So you can see with my template I've created here that it looks very similar to the sales budget but yet very different because of the items listed down in this column. But you'll notice that we start with the budgeted sales which came from the forecasted sales in the sales budget. So I'm simply going to link back to the sales per quarter listed in the sales budget. And for the year we have the sum of all four quarters added together. Now, um, you know, we're looking at how many t-shirts we're going to produce. We'd never produce exactly what we think we're going to sell because what if the sales actually exceed what we think we're going to sell? We'd run out and we don't want to miss out on um, the, the opportunity of making a sale. So we come up with some target ending finished goods or a buffer or some amount we want to have on hand if we sell through all this thousand. So a company would establish a procedure as to how much that is. And uh, we're told up here that their policy says we're going to create and have on hand 20% of the following quarter's sales. So what that means is if it for quarter one, we need to have 20% of quarter two's sales in, on hand in addition to the, the thousand we're going to sell. So I'm going to take and add 20% of the following quarter sales. So that number for quarter one times 0.2 is 20%. So we're going to add 240 to the um, expected sales amount. Now this works all the way up through that third quarter. And you'll notice this is 20% of quarter four's expected sales. But for quarter four, what do we do, right? We're not told up in this little chart what the expected sales are for the following year's first quarter. But that information is given to us right here. So for this first quarter of the following year, we're expected to sell 1,000 t-shirts. 20% of that 1,000 would be an additional 200. So there I'm going to have uh, my additions to production uh, on top of what we think we're going to sell. So the total units we're going to require are what we think we're going to sell plus this ending inventory that we want to have on hand. And so that's th those two added together, and I'm just copying these formulas across because Excel allows us to do that. Um, but now, and we're looking at production, not just how many we're going to have on hand. So I would have to produce 1,240 if I didn't have any t-shirts already sitting on my shelves. However, we probably already have some t-shirts sitting on our shelves. And we're told right up here that the beginning inventory of t-shirts for the first quarter of the year is 180. So that's 180 I don't need to produce of the 1240. And that works nicely for the first quarter because it's spelled out for us how many we have on hand. Now these, the second, third, and fourth quarter we've got to do some uh, guesswork here to figure out what we're going to have uh, on hand at the beginning of this quarter. Um, now logically, if we actually, you know, this is a guess, right, if we actually sell the 1,000, that means we're still going to have this 240 on hand. So I'm simply going to take the estimated ending uh, uh, inventory from this first quarter, and that logically is my beginning inventory for the second quarter. Again, this is just a guess. It's unlikely that this is exactly what will happen. The 300 came from here. This was my expected ending inventory quarter two, that becomes my in beginning inventory for quarter three, and I'll do the same thing for quarter four, and again, I can just sum all of those quarters to get the yearly amount. So the units of finished goods that I need to make, I want to have this many units, 1240, because this is how many I'm going to sell, plus what I want to have on hand, and I'm going to subtract the quantity, let me just redo this formula so that you can see it's this quantity minus the amount I think I'm going to have on hand at the beginning of the year. I only need to make 1,060 for first the first quarter. And this becomes a very integral part of our master budget because it lays the foundation for how much labor we need and how much material we're going to have to purchase. So that's how we create the production budget given the sales budget and some extra information on um, ending and beginning inventory figures.